Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. It is mail call time and this, you guys already read the video title, it is my very first Spyderco knife and also my very first integral knife. Those of you out there who are familiar with folding pocket knives and especially if you are a Spyderco fan, you would already know what knife this is just by me saying integral knife and my first Spyderco. I've been saving for quite some time just so I could get this because I think it's a really beautiful looking knife. Let's cut the banter, let's crack this thing open. Spyderco knife pouch. That's cool. This one is actually made in Taiwan. This is, if I'm not wrong, it's called Spyderco Taichong, I think. Taichong. There we go. You guys can see the amount of lubrication on it, especially the pivot area. I'm gonna just dab it off. And that should be it. This is the Spyderco Nirvana, everyone. Spyderco's one and only, at least only so far, integral knife. And if you guys don't know what an integral knife is, basically it is a knife with a scale that is milled out of a single piece of whatever material. And this one is in titanium. You guys can see, no screws. Just the pivot screw and that's it. I'm actually pretty blown away. I thought that this finish was gonna be worse. Cause you know, when you're gonna put down a good amount of money for something, you usually check out a lot of reviews, as many as you can. And most of the reviews that I watched mentioned that the finish on this wasn't that great. And this one isn't in, you know, a very fantastic condition, I suppose. It is like coated or like blasted or something like that. But it features this very beautiful cracked glass finish and I'm such a fan. Oh man, I'm getting skin gasms right now. So yes, this is my very first integral knife. I'm just gonna open it up this way. Okay, so there's another thing that people always mention about this is that the blade or the grind on the blade is not that great. My goodness, it is a pretty long blade. I gotta say, I realize that there isn't a box for this. I wonder why. I'm just gonna put this right here and then bring out some other knives so that I can give you guys a size comparison. Put the pouch out of the way. First of all, we got a CRKT Pilar and you guys saw this when I was using this to open up the box and it is a custom knife scale. Uh, I won't be talking about that in this video, but that's a size comparison. Also, I've got my Benchmade Saibu. There we go. Let's just put this closer a little bit. And then I have my Ferrum Forge Falcon. Size comparison for all of you. The Nirvana is clearly much larger and much longer than any other knife that I own. But I gotta say that I just really wanted to share this experience with you guys because wow, I mean, what can I say? My first spider core and this spidey hole here is pretty cool. So it is a frame lock because that's how integral knives work. Wow, that is quite tough. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna try and open it with my middle finger. Let's see how this works. Oh, not bad, not bad for my first try. Let's try it again. Oh, I got it, I got it. That's actually pretty easy. Let's try it again. Yeah, I think I got it down. Let's see if I can flick it open with my thumb. Oh, wow, that is satisfying. That really is satisfying. My goodness, this thing actually feels super comfortable. Wow. Okay, I could hold it a little bit further up front with the jimping up here to help me out. That's actually pretty cool. But this thing, the reason why I got it guys is because this is such a looker. Honestly speaking, look at that. I'm gonna keep the other knives. Just leave them around there. So we can see all the details in it. We got the Spider Co logo etched into the blade itself with this. And that's a steel CPM S90V made in Taichung, Taiwan. And this logo, in case you guys don't know, it is Peter Resenti's logo. So Peter Resenti actually did a crossover with Spider Co. This is a production knife, not a Peter Resenti custom. But I don't know why. It's just a Spider Co version that has this cracked glass finish and this is the whole reason why I got so drawn to it. I'm gonna admit to you guys, I spent quite a lot. I spent 400 on this, like 399 off Knife Center. And I'm gonna tell you guys that it wasn't easy for me to get this here into Singapore because one, Knife Center doesn't ship overseas, at least not to Singapore. And two, because Knife Center does not accept any other form of payment except for credit card payments and they don't accept overseas or international credit cards. They only accept US-based credit cards. And so I had to employ the services of Com Gateway I had to use the buy for me function. So I paid like, I think an extra $20 just to get this in. So all in all, this knife with the extra charge and shipping cost me about 450 US. But there is something that I want to do to this. I want to dismantle the whole thing. I know I'm going to avoid the warranty, but you know what? Heck it. I'm going to dismantle it and then I'm going to stonewash this guy over here. And then we'll see how that contrast looks after that because all these scratches, I want it to look a little bit more deliberate. I'm going to just throw it into my stonewashing rig for a couple of hours and get a nice stonewash wash finish very much like what I did with the Falcon right here if you guys realize the Falcon is not the standard B blasted finish it is a stone washed finish because I did that gonna have to do it man I'm gonna have to do it I just really really like the stone wash look <laughs> and in the meantime I actually got one of these these are the third party 
deep carry pocket clip and this is by MXG gear right here MXG gear and I got one also in a Benchmade spec you could see BM for Benchmade because I want to change the Saibu one technically the clip on the Saibu is a deep carry clip but tension is just too tough like it's crazy so you know, I'm probably gonna change it to something a bit longer so it has a little bit more flex so you guys can see the difference in length for the Saibu. Yeah, that's a clip I wanna use, but just uh, wanted a deep carry pocket clip because uh, this one clearly isn't a deep carry clip and the fact that this knife is already so long, I'm gonna have this much at least sticking out of my pocket and I don't want that. So shout outs to MXG Gear. Got them off the website. Pretty good deal. I think this was like, what, 23 US or something like that. So I'm gonna change that. But first of all, I'm gonna dismantle the whole thing like I said throw this into the stone washing rig and see how it turns out. I know it's a random video, but uh, yeah, this is this is my Spyderco Nirvana, everyone. My very first Spyderco, hopefully not my last, but my very first Integral also, hopefully not my last Integral. Something about Integral knives, they just are so cool, but they are just so expensive. Lucky enough to find one over at Knife Center for a relatively acceptable price. And it is pretty hefty for titanium. I'm really surprised. So I guess I'll do a follow-up video. I'll catch you guys in the next part. See ya. Hey guys, guess what? I am back and I have already stonewashed my Nirvana scale. I am really, really happy with the way it turned out. And the thing is, I want to share with you guys how I actually did the stonewash and <laughs> you're going to find this really interesting. First of all, I generally stonewash using a Lawtone 3A tumbler and I know it's kind of close to the camera so you guys can't really see but this is the Lawtone 3A tumbling barrel and if you notice, the Nirvana sits a little bit too high, too tall. You can see it from the bottom all the way to the top and it protrudes out. So this barrel definitely is too small or too short, I should say. And so what I did was basically to wing it. And how I did that was to get myself one of these, these Quaker Oats Instant Oatmeal Tin Can. You guys can see it's just a typical tin can and this can is taller than the Nirvana. There you go, you can see it's taller than the Nirvana scale which is perfect for what I needed. So I got my rocks. These are my stone washing rocks. They basically are just like pebbles, rounded pebbles. You could see them inside about one to one and a half inch rounded pebbles. What I did basically was just throw this whole scale inside, fill it up with a little bit of water, just a little bit, really little bit of water and some dishwashing soap. Close the lid and I just shook it by hand like that while gently spinning it. So kind of like this. For about an hour while I was watching an episode of Game of Thrones, yes, I actually did this stone wash by hand by shaking this thing for an hour. Bicep power, everyone. <laughs> now, before you guys mention anything about the kind of medium I use or the kind of solution I use for tumbling, let me just tell you guys that there are many, many different options for tumbling solutions and also different kind of media that you want to use for tumbling. But this is the way I do it. It is completely fine. I've been doing it over and over again. And just so I could prove it to you guys, I've stonewashed this knuckle roller. This is the Revolver by Unquiet Hands. And you guys can see the tumbling on this. I've also stonewashed one of these. This is the Axis Micro, the original 608 version by LRS. And you can see the details on it. And I've always liked this pretty obvious kind of a stonewash look. You know, I'm not one to actually go for that very satin finish. Next is a Trit Lantern that I wear around my neck as a necklace. This one is by Bula Kula. It is the muzzle break trit lantern and this one I stonewashed myself which resulted in a pretty nice two-tone you could see the polish effect on the inside as well as here and then you could see the stone washed outside here and also of course two knives this here is the CRKT Pilar and this here is the Ferrum Forge Mass Drop Falcon look at the scales you guys yes so stone washing is nothing new to me especially for frame locks you guys can see that stone washing on frame locks is done pretty all right in my opinion granted that this is all DIY this one and this one I've thrown into the Law Tone Tumbler using the same kind of solution and same type of media and I've gotten the results that I really wanted and so I did the same for this and if you guys are wondering how I got such an even finish on the lock bar area all I did was to fashion out a couple of small little pieces one with a cutting board and one with a folded piece of I guess this is like tin tin sheet put them together make sure that they would sit inside and not protrude out then drill out a hole in the middle with relevance to the pivot pin slot over here and then also carved out a smaller little hole or you could say a notch for the detent pin so that this thing would move around then shoved everything in as you guys can see it is a perfect fit and then just got myself a little screw one of these with that flanged washer thing just screwed it in place and this would actually sit like that and it is flush here and on the flip side, it would not protrude all the way. It would be just nice. So everything would be in place. And this would basically force the lock bar to be flush with the rest of the blade scale. And basically, this is how I do it. 
I mean, I do it differently for different knife applications. And these are relatively easier because these are frame lock knives. The Nirvana, however, is my first time handling an integral knife. So basically I had to just think a little bit out of the box and this is my way of doing it DIY. So now I'm gonna install the blade back. I'm gonna get all these out of the way first and bring in all the necessary pieces as well as the relevant tools. So uh, here we go. Well, of course I can't forget the lubrication I'm using. I'm using Blue Lube. Yes, it is a Benchmade brand Blue Lube, but it works for me. It's what I have right now. Should be fine because it is a ball bearing system anyway, a paper towel. And of course the blade. And I have not done anything to the blade. Uh, I don't want to try to customize blades because I don't think I have the skill to. I do have a sharpening tool, but I'm not really gonna try my hand on this because if I screw the blade up, I don't think I could repair it. But I've seen people with a nightmare grind on this and oh my goodness, I must the nightmare grind just looks so beautiful. I'm considering contacting someone who can do a nightmare grind and then sending just a blade over to the person. But I'll have to see how it goes because this honestly is a pretty expensive knife. Yeah. So I guess I'll start by putting the washers into these slots first and then I'll slide everything in. So here we go. And I think I'm done. Blade centering looks pretty okay in my opinion. I also put some Loctite into the pivot screw and I forgot to mention that earlier. Okay, uh, let's try and deploy this. Well, that's pretty good. I'm facing a little bit of lock bar stick. It just feels like there's a little bit. I'm gonna try and deploy it with my thumb. That's pretty good. Again, slight lock bar stick. Not bad at all. I guess it's gonna need a little bit more time to break in because I literally just installed it back and I guess it's gonna need some time for that loop to kind of do its magic. But all in all, seems pretty good so far, honestly. All right, all right. So it seems that I can't just end off this video without giving you guys any specs on the Nirvana. It is kind of expected. Uh, I'm not a knife reviewer, like I said before, but I think specs should at least be shared with you guys. Now closed, this knife is about 4.72 inches long and is the longest knife that I own right now. <laughs> That's how it fits in my, I guess my medium to large Asian sized hands. Blade length is 3.74 inches. So the whole thing looks like that pretty beastly. So the entire length is almost like what, eight inches long? Yeah, that's that's actually pretty big. And this is a drop point style blade, saber grind. The handle material here, you guys already know, it is an integral knife, titanium. And the locking mechanism is, well, Chris Reeves, like a frame lock blade material is S90V, you can see right there. And it is a Peter Recenti collaboration with Spyderco, but this is Spyderco Taichung, Taiwan. The lockup is about, right now it's about like what, 30% in? 40% in, but I think that's because this detent is really, really, really strong. Now, a lot of people have given feedback about the detent being overly strong, and I would say that yes, this is possibly one of the strongest detent, but if I push it out just a bit and then I just let it rest, that's the actual lockup right there. That's like what, 20%, so it's the sheer force of this detent right here. That is just, that is crazy. That is really, really crazy, but you want something that is really, really sturdy. This is super sturdy. After I've reinstalled it, there is no lock, rock or blade play at all. Then of course, blade centering is just about there. You guys saw already, pretty centered. And I really, really like the application of the spider co hole, the trademark round thumb hole. I love the fact that the scale also is milled out to match the hole. I think it's really beautiful and it lets you get a nice grip inside there with your thumb when you're deploying it. The main downside is that because this detent is so strong and there's some lock stick, you guys can see that? Look. Uh, right there. So there is some lock stick. I'm really gonna have to do the whole graphite thing. And if you guys don't know what the graphite thing is, basically you just wanna get a pencil and you wanna rub off some of the pencil lead or the graphite onto this part of the blade, the blade tang or whatever that's called. And then you're gonna basically just test it a few times and then it'll get better over time. So that kind of eliminates any kind of lock stick. And the next thing is that there's only one position for the pocket clip, which is right-handed tip up carry. Those of you who want it to be on the left side, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to mill your own slots out. And for me, I'm totally fine with this because because I usually keep my knives in my right pocket anyway. I am left-handed, but I actually use my right hand for a lot of other applications. Like for example, when I fidget with spinners, it's always right hand. And when I handle knives and when I handle scissors, it's always with the right hand. Oh my goodness, this, this is really getting me. I also forgot to mention that there's some jimping up here on the blade. So that, let's try to open this with my left hand. <laughs> Clearly I need practice. <laughs> I don't handle knives with my left hand. <laughs> 
for whatever reason. I'm gonna try and get used to using my thumb to flick it open with the spider hole, but I'm kind of used to the action with my middle finger, so that's actually pretty good. So since we were talking about the clip, I have the clip that I want to install. And you guys can see that this is the original clip. It's got the Spider Co logo basically laser etched on it. It looks like it's laser etched, but I don't really like the fact that this is not a deep carry clip. But I do have a separate deep carry pocket clip. And this one I mentioned in the earlier part of the video as well. This is by MXG Gear. Make sure you go check them out if you guys are interested. They do sell pocket clips for a bunch of different knives. MXGgear.com and I really, really hate this. This, that lock stick is just, just, oh my god, that is obnoxious. Here we go, just gonna look for my T6 Torx screw bit. Oh, and if you guys are wondering what size this pivot screw is, basically it is a T8. So we've got a T6 right here, and you'll notice that there are two different lengths of the screws. And for this application, we're gonna use the short one out here, and the long one in here. Because if you guys notice, you actually see that screw slot. This one, this one goes through right there, only the outermost one. You can see that screw slot there. The other two are completely milled into the frame itself, so that's where you'll be using the longer screws. The short one is for the one on the outside because you don't want it to be sticking out too far in case you scratch your blade. And we are done. Pocket clip installed. Cool. Pocket clip doesn't really get in the way. Everything feels pretty ergonomic. And I also chose a plain stone washed finish, but this is a very, very smooth, very fine detailed stone wash. So you guys can see that inside, the screw does not protrude out and that is really what we want. I really wanted to share with you the excitement that I had for this. I've really wanted this knife for quite some time. After I saw it, the cracked glass finish is so beautiful, but I also heard a lot of things, you know, a lot of negative things that people said. And you know, one of the things was that they did not like the actual finish of it. They didn't like that whole bead blasted finish because it was kind of like, I guess, a weird texture and would scratch off easily. You guys saw when I first took it out of the pouch, it was supposed to be brand new, but it already had some scratches on the finish and that really kind of irked me. So, you know, in my mind, I was thinking I should be able to give this a stone wash and with the stone washing, I would get rid of all, if not at least most of that bead blasting finish because I'm not a fan of bead blasted finishes. You guys can tell because I completely stone washed my Falcon here and this was actually bead blasted as well. I do not like bead blast finishes. I, I think it feels a bit strange and I also don't like the way that it is so prone to getting scratched off easily. So. This really was something that I wanted to do and I also wanted to change this clip and when I went online, I did a search and I found out that MXG Gear actually does pocket clips for a handful of Spyderco and Benchmade stuff. I just hopped on it and I bought myself an upgrade. I'm going to call it upgraded and upgraded pocket clip for both my Benchmade Saibu and for this and I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. It was a little risk. I'm going to say it was a little risk because the Saibu and the Nirvana were not specifically listed in the MXG Gear site. I just kind of looked at a lot of pictures of different Benchmade knives and a lot of pictures of different Spyderco knives and then I tried to just kind of guess by looking at the number of slots for the clip and the distance between the clip screws, basically all of that. So I just narrowed it down and then I took a leap of faith and man oh man, I gotta say I am happy. Let me just show you guys my Saibu so I can put my money where my mouth is. Saibu is here. So this is what it looks like now with the new clip from MXG Gear. It's gonna sit very comfortably in my pocket with nothing actually protruding out. And it's a lot easier now to lift up the clip as compared to before. And with that, everyone, I'm going to end off the video. Thank you so much for sharing in the size of my life. I hope that you enjoyed it because I really enjoyed the whole process of everything, unboxing, stone washing, reinstalling it. And uh, I'll catch all of you in the next slice of my life. Thank you once again. And Gaga Boost.